Good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are at. Welcome back to the BitLab Academy Daily live stream, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. We had to take yesterday off because we got a lot of back-end stuff we're doing. We're getting all these, all these updates getting integrated into the brand new website, all the new courses, the quizzes, all the resources. Man, has this been an undertaking. Shout out to the entire Hit Network team. Shout out to Craig, shout out to Ray, shout out to Alex Green here in chat. Uh, we've been, I mean, working tirelessly behind the scenes so we could get this up ASAP. So big love to everybody. Shout out to everybody that is here, uh, here already in chat. Uh, you're already you're basically showing up early uh, on this stream. I really appreciate all of you being here. Uh, with that being said, Alex Green, how you doing? Karen Swigart Harris. Matt Lane, Alexandra G, Immortal Detan. Uh, who else we got in here? We have so many people. Nicholas Rito. Uh, we got uh, Justin Eubanks, always in the house. Jackson Crawford. I think I saw Crimson, yeah, Crimson Caravan Company. Uh, so many people in here. So we've got a lot to cover today. Markets, what the heck is going on? All this FUD that just seems nonstop on the heels of the banking crisis that's happening. So we're just going to jump right into it today. We'll do all a bunch of the other stuff we typically do at the intro. We're going to intermix that stuff throughout the show so we can jump right into the content for all of you. If you have not yet, uh, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ding that bell, join our community, be a part of our community here at BitLab. Uh, we do, we really try to bridge that gap between beginner and pro, whether you are a beginner or a pro, we've got the alpha for you here, breaking down concepts, breaking down strategy, breaking down different action plans and how we can engage with this market so we can consistently navigate it profitably and get in position when we need to and get out of position when we need to so we could protect our capital. So with that being said, my name is Kelly Kellum and I am the host of the show here at BitLab Academy. Go and follow me there at that at, at Kelly Kellum, K-E-L-L-Y, K-E-L-L-A-M. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. Markets. Nothing much has changed when you look at the macro, right? We always want to start with the macro, then the midterm, then the micro. So this is a three-day chart, Bitcoin USD. We could see that, uh, of course, we've broken out of this massive falling wedge here, which is a bullish structure. Uh, but we could see we broke out. We've you know retested this a few times, come down even to the target box that I had created. And we're finding a lot of resistance right up here. This is why the title of this video, Bitcoin Stalled. Is it stalled? Does this mean the rally's over? Does this mean it's uh, down into the abyss from here? As uh, Crypto Kirby uh, would say, uh, Bitcoin's going down, down into the abyss. Well, I think there's a high likelihood that we will get a, a somewhat of a pullback. And if not, maybe some healthy consolidation. And that's okay. That's kind of what we want after we've had these two. I mean, look at this. If we get, if take a, just press the shift button, click on the chart. From there, you know, this first sort of push up was a 43% push up. And then after our pullback, we do our next push up, another 44% push up, almost 45%. There's been a lot of bullish uh, momentum that has come in here. Does this mean we just should expect it to go straight up? Absolutely not. We need to be okay with, uh, with price action doing what is healthy, which is uh, basically marked with the action pattern sort of like this. Where you have your push up, you have your pullback, you have your push up, you have your pullback, and you have your, you know, basically push up, retrace, push up, retrace, continuation. This is what we're looking for in the market. And this is essentially what we're getting here. We had a little bit of a smaller push up here, but a really big pullback that really, you know, although we did form a lower low here, you have to also note everything is within context. We had a lower low, but this also reestablished that this is a line of support, reaffirming that we have switched this from macro resistance to support retested it again support and we broke past this high formed a new high and why did we stop here well as we've broken down and shown on this channel over and over and i want you to always do this if you're confused if you're zoomed in on a one hour chart or a two hour chart or a 10 minute chart go out to the three day or the weekly and see okay why is this happening what is what is this area of interest Previous price action, especially when you're not in price discovery, and price discovery means you've broken past uh, a price point in which price has never been with that asset, meaning you break it, you're breaking past previous all-time high, that is price discovery. We're not in that zone right now. We are still, when you're anytime trading, 
when you're trading as you are like you are here uh where the price action is traveling through areas that price has been before you can utilize the roadmap of previous price action and we can see that with not only this chart pattern here this candle pattern this falling wedge that's one aspect of uh, technical analysis but we can also see previous price action of where there's been areas of interest see here where this uh basically stopped and then over here we also this this marked a critical zone where we really had to fight through. This is that 24 to 25K range that we broke out of. And then we should just go up into the moon from here, right? Well, that's not how markets work. So we see this broke out to, up, to the upside, but we can also see this sort of macro region of previous price action uh, support uh, and resistance right in here. And we can see this is exactly where price action kind of took a pause. Now, why is this? Why is it so important that we draw out and basically, you know, experiment? It's always going to be an experiment when you're doing TA, but marking out where there's been areas of interest, meaning price action has either found support, as we see here, or found resistance, as we're seeing here. We could have predicted this resistance based on all this macro support that we had. Uh, basically, if we take a measuring tool, come here, uh, date range, basically from here, all the way to here, so uh, 527 days, okay, we had uh, macro support. So we can assume that this may be an area that will have a little stopping point, a pit stop, if you will, for, for price action to interact with, for people that are very underwater and they're just excited to now get out because they're, they're back in profit. Uh, and they also see that this is previous price action support. This gives them, this gives you this gives anybody that's patient and that's investing and trading with a plan an indication that this is a level that we may see price action take a little bit of a breather. And this is exactly what we're seeing. So now that we're looking essentially at the price, we can also zoom out on this and see with these red lines, previous, uh, this is a previous halvings. And we can map out around roughly where the next halving is going to be. And it's going to be sometime in April to May of 2024. Uh, we've talked about this at length here on the channel about how price action may get a sort of a hype rally into it, pullback, and then continuation. Hype rally much earlier into this pullback, global shutdown, global economic shutdown, that crisis in March of 2020, and then basically at the having uh, the continuation, basically the the real uh, not continuation, but uh, sort of kickstart to the, the to the start of this bull run that basically took us from this level to shift up. I mean, that's a 600% gain. Now, in the previous, from here, in the previous market, we had a 2,800 or almost 3,000% gain. So which is it? How do we predict this into the future? Well, there's a lot of stuff we can do here and there's a lot of stuff we need to take into consideration. So let's go ahead and figure out what's going on in the market. We're not gonna really go into news stories, but we're at least going to gloss over them and just see some of the stimulus, some of the things that are weighing on the market. Because at the end of the day, what do we say about price action? Price action, which is all these candlesticks, all these little bars that we see on the chart, this is a visual representation of the psychology of the market on the time frame you're looking. So if this is a three day, each one of these candlesticks, we zoom in more closely, each candlestick represents three days. If we come down to the one hour, each candlestick represents one hour. And as I said, each one of these is a representation of what the dominant market uh, participant psychology is on that time frame. In this case, we're seeing green candles and continuation of green candles. This is this showing from this range bottom to this range top. This, this is dominated by a bullish narrative. We see from up here where we get rejected. This is dominated by a bearish narrative because the price is going down. And so, this is all very basic stuff. We all need to remember this. No matter how long you've been in, in, in the markets, we need to remember that price action is our best tool of understanding what's going on because this is not a game and this is not something that, you know, TA is just a joke or it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. No, this is, we're looking at the market psychology play out over time and looking for shifts in momentum. And to do such, we don't, the best use for all this and the best navigate, uh, way to navigate these markets is not just to look at the price action on the chart, but at least, at least even if you're not gonna do deep fundamental analysis, if you're not gonna do deep news analysis, that's, comp that's completely okay. 
But it is important to at least be aware at a basic level what is going on in the market. So we're going to go through a couple, uh, a number of things today. Uh, not so much uh, uh, of the Twitter stuff, uh, but a couple of the news stories. And then we're going to see what's going on in the market. We know we're having these cascading banking failures, which is terrible as it is for the world economy. Uh, at, at the end of the day, anybody that is in position already in crypto, uh, there's going to be two sort of narratives here that we need to pay attention to. There's going to be the fear narrative that causes some markets to sell off, including Bitcoin and altcoins, where there, there may be pullbacks uh, as those FUD campaigns hit, whether it's the Binance FUD, whether that's true or not, we don't know yet. This is, uh, you know, this is on the heels of everything going on with uh, the banking failures. And uh, so we need to take that, we need to take all the news stories that we're seeing with a grain of salt uh, and also weigh them against why is this narrative being pushed? So if we're seeing the FOMC come out in the same day, then we get a Wells notice, the SEC enforcement uh, likely coming to, to Coinbase. And then the next day, you know, the, uh, around the same time period, Jack Dorsey, previous CEO of Twitter, as well as a CEO of Block, uh, then getting that uh, basically hit piece done on him. And now we're having the funded campaign against Binance. What's true, what's not? Well, on the one hand, we need to map out what's going on with our TA on the charts, on all the assets that we're looking at, and not only the assets we're looking at, the assets that also have uh, sort of adjacent impact onto what's going on. Looking at the SPX, you know, uh, S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the dollar index, uh, USDT dominance as it relates to crypto markets, and form ourselves. Our, our goal here. When we sit down at our trading desk, at our trading terminal, before we do anything is we want to get a broader picture of everything going on that's impacting the psychology of the average trader, because that will also give us an edge as to look to where momentum might be shifting. And if that's going to be sustained momentum in that direction or reversal, or if that's going to be just a temporary sell-off or, temp or a temporary spike in price, uh, e either direction. So... We're going to dive through all that today. And before we do, make sure that you hit that like button, you hit that subscribe button, and you ding that bell because you need to be a part. Of, if you're watching, you need to be a part of this community. And you also need to engage with channels like this or any channel you watch on crypto within the crypto ecosystem. Let YouTube know that you're interested in this crypto content because it helps post this and push this out to more people so we can all do a part, our part in helping uh, drive engagement and drive awareness about crypto in a healthy way so that we can make this uh, ecosystem grow. So jumping back into the pages here. Uh, if you have not yet, come over here to uh, today's, uh, we do giveaways. We do giveaways throughout the week now based on people retweeting uh, the daily uh, the daily post here. So come to the BitLab Academy page, which is at Academy BitLab. You can see down here. You can also see it right here. And come and retweet this. We pick winners from those who retweet this. Make sure you're following this page too, because you have to, in order to qualify, you have to uh, like this page and then uh, retweet, uh, uh, retweet uh, these tweets. And on uh, Fridays, Fridays, we are going to be picking the winners. You're not going to know which day. You're not going to know which day we're, we're picking the winner from. So make sure you go ahead and retweet these on a daily basis. At the end of the show, we are going to pick a winner from uh, uh, from those that did retweet um, Friday's stream. So stick around for that. We've got a lot. We're not just going to, this is not a news uh, focused show. We, we dive into the charts. We break down strategies. We break down concepts. So stick with us here. Get involved in the chat. Let us know where are you from? Where are you watching from? Where are you tuned in from? Uh, make sure you're engaging with that poll. Are you bullish or bearish? Do you think this FUD campaign is something that's going to lead to uh, in the you know in, in in the short term in the next uh, couple of weeks? Is this something that's signaling that we're uh, about to have an explosion? Or are you bearish? Are you feeling like you need to move out of positions? Let us know. Get involved with the chat here. Whether you're watching here on the BitLab Academy page or if you're watching over Hit Network, make sure you come over here and follow us at youtubecom forward slash at BitLab Academy. We're up at 5,000, almost, almost 5,600 uh, followers. Come and subscribe, join our page. Now, here we're going to go ahead and go through some of these things here. I want to, uh, I just wanted to highlight this because uh, this is something that affects what's going on in the markets. Let me make sure that this is not muted. 
Uh, let me come down here. Where are we at? Okay, so where is charts? I don't know where. Let me give me one second. Give me one second. Right Here now is have we made it through the worst of this contagion when it comes to the banking crisis? You're pretty firmly in the camp that we have not. Well, you know, it's so much fun, Becky, to focus on AI and the incredible innovations that are going on. But at the end of the day, sit back and think about common sense. In 2020 and 2021, trillions of dollars, more than a trillion, of mortgage-backed securities, of commercial real estate loans, of treasuries were sold, were, on the, were basically placed on the balance sheets of insurance companies and banks, okay? And investors and, and people sitting in homes right now enjoyed that. But those loans are still on the bank's balance sheets. And they're, when, you, when you take interest rates from zero to 5% in 13 months, those loans are now worth somewhere between 75 and 85, maybe 90 cents of the dollar. And those are massive losses under the surface. Our 21 Lehman systemic risk indicators are pointing at the highest probability of a crash or a sharp drawdown in the next 60 days. It's the highest probability since COVID. A sharp drawdown in, in what? In equities markets? Yeah, in equities. So in other words, the NASDAQ's really ignoring the credit risk. And whenever we've seen this over the years, we, see, we saw this before COVID, we saw this before Lehman. What happens is as a shock comes in, credit markets start to price in the risk, but equities don't. They focus on things like AI or things like the dot-com revolution in the 90s. So as you can see, there is... Uh, not you know when, when we're focused on Bitcoin, when we're focused on Ethereum or Cardano or AVAX or what you know, Matic, whatever's in your portfolio, uh, whether you're also within the traditional markets, it's important that we understand that there is other things at play that are going to affect the psychology of the market, the risk on risk off behavior, and so we have to be aware of things like this. Whether this is true, whether it's whether the markets are going to crash or not, we need to be aware of the broader context of what's happening within the markets. Now, moving on here, we can also see right here with, uh, I think this is Game of Trades, we could see the crypto market is getting too euphoric. Uh, and this is his uh, his sort of context. Fear and greed index is at the highest level since uh, 2022, indicating extreme greed. Now we can come over here, we can go to, uh, was it, uh, look into bitcoin.com. And we can come to charts right here. We can come to fear and greed index. Where is this guy at right here? And we can see, looking at this chart, we see this color right here. Uh, we're up at the uh, 59 sort of level. And I, this is a, a delay a day or two, uh, uh, a few days uh, actually. Uh, but we're getting up into this region, you see, which is essentially this region here on the color scale that is showing uh, in, in this, these drawdowns has also marked when we've had price action pullbacks. And this is specifically looking at Bitcoin. Now, this doesn't mean we're actually going to get a pullback, but it's just we want to look at this in context of where we're at. Are, are we going to push bullish or are we going to break down more bearishly? Well, we can also see similarly, this was breakdowns, but this is also at that point when we really were in the middle of starting to, to have upward pushes. We see this again right here. We see it again right here. So... Is this something we use as a specific tool to trade on? No, but in the context, just like any, any tool we're using in our analysis, whether it's on-chain data, technical analysis, fear and greed index, we use all of these like a basket of ingredients to help shape a full picture about what's going on in the markets. Now, moving on to the next uh, tweet here, uh, I wanted to just point this out, uh, and this is right here. Uh, okay, so breaking NASDAQ to launch Bitcoin custody by the end of June. Is this going to be bullish or bearish? We don't know yet. One of the things I do want to point out is the fact that when we look back to uh, when Bact launched, which was a crypto futures, uh, and when you also look at when Coinbase IPO'd, uh, those two, you know, previously or leading up to that news, uh, you know, the, the, the common retail everyday investor was thinking this is going to be the thing that's going to drive the market higher. What happened immediately following those? Markets completely deteriorated after that. So is this going to be a bullish thing or a bearish thing? Well, we don't know yet, but what we can do is we can look at the markets 
as they sit today and what the critical levels are, both bullish and bearish, so that we can have a plan, so that we can engage with this market and have a strategy to engage so that we're not just chomping at the bit because we see a green candle and we jump in, you know, basically just buying a rocket candle and then have it reverse another direction. Or we're very bullish and we see, uh, you know, the start of a bearish candle and so we just get out and then the market reverses back up. We need to have a plan. We need to have a strategy in place. Now, coming over here, we can see it is Tuesday, March 28th. So I'm just kind of going through a strategy that we need to do every day. We go through some of the news, some of the economic calendar stuff, stuff on the economic calendar so we can see what is shaping the market each day. Why is Bitcoin stalling at 28K? Well, we can see today we had the good, uh, goods trades balance. Uh, this came in uh, basically the expectation. We could see here the forecast was 90.2 minus 90.2 billion. Uh, but we're actually, the, the trade balance is actually a down a little bit more than that. 91.6 billion instead of 90.2 billion. Uh, this is uh, roughly a, a little bit more also than the previous of uh, minus 91.1 billion. Uh, we can also see the preliminary wholesale inventories. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is coming in uh, a little bit uh, higher than expected. Uh, now we can see uh, HPI composite. We look forward in the week. We see that we have pending home sales. This will be big. This is a good in economic indicator about what's going on with the market. We're also going to have an FOMC me uh, member speak tomorrow. We have crude oil inventory. We have a lot of stuff going on on a daily basis. Whereas when we're in a very, very, very strong market, by the way, there's all this stuff going on regularly. This is not some new thing that these new data points are just all of a sudden something we should be watching. These things go on on a regular basis anyway. But the difference is when we have markets that are uncertain like we do right now, and we're having a lot of, uh, leg uh, not legacy is the wrong word, but lasting, lasting and entrenching sort of issues that are still stemming from the global economic shutdown, March 2020, and we're still seeing some of those issues being worked out, supply chain issues, uh, logistics, um, uh, inflation, monetary policy that's trying to uh, grapple with all these things. Well, when the market is uncertain, then every one of these small little points can drive a sharp increase in price or a sharp sell-off in price. Uh, and then in addition to all this, then we have this these FUD campaigns that are coming out uh, in, in regards to crypto on the heels of these banking crises, as well as this talking points that, we, that, that we've seen over this last week where Russia is now going to be transacting uh, basically uh, using the Chinese yuan, Saudi Arabia in, uh, in talks as well, is using, uh, in talks not, not having been decided, I, sh I should mention, in talks of using the Chinese yuan over US dollar for settlement uh, of, of oil. Now, will this happen? Will, the, will this not happen? This is going to be something that's going to take uh, a while to play out because it's not as simple, for instance, as Saudi Arabia just switching to the Chinese yuan because the world economy is really, really, really heavily tied to uh, oil, uh, the trade of oil. And so uh, just immediately switching to the, to, to the Chinese yuan over the U.S. dollar would not only impact, you know, driving down the value of the, the dollar index, uh, but it could, ca it could cause cascading world economy uh, issues, collapses, uh, uh, sky-high inflation in the Western world, which we have to remember all these things are tied together. So even if they wanted to do that because they're trying to change uh, the U.S. dominance uh, in, uh, globally, you know, in terms of world markets, driving down the U.S. economy would, in effect, also have a domino effect in how those world markets, you know, for instance, we have a huge amount of trade that we do with China, regardless of this trade war. We have a huge amount of uh, impact on uh, other world economies based on our imports and exports. So if we have drastic economic uh, impact uh, that's negative here in the U.S. that would have a domino effect that would cascade into those uh, into other world markets as well. So this is an international trade war that's going on right now, an international currency war that's going on, on right now that is essentially, I mean, a chess match, a, a, a chess match that has more implications than we can really draw just from looking at a few articles, but we need to be aware of all these things going on. So jumping back into what's going on in the markets right now, I come, I'm gonna come over here 
to newsnow.com. I love this uh, news site because it's just a natural sort of news aggregator pulls from all kinds of different sources. This is a free website. This is not a plug. This is just something I use so I can quickly see what the headlines are. And by the way, you can use it for anything, uh, t uh, politics, world, sports, business. And it pulls topics from all kinds of places. You can see the top stories, latest news, most read. And we can just see right here, top stories. Uh, okay, uh, price retains 27K, but forecast says correction incoming. Okay, uh, uh, everyone waiting for 25K. So these are some bullish top uh, bullish headlines. Uh, we can, and I actually pulled up a couple of the headlines from here that we that I just thought we should just take a peek at. Now looking here, we could see what a weakening U.S. dollar means for Bitcoin in the world. This is something. These are the type of things we need to be paying attention to. We're not going to go into this article, but the weakening dollar. This is going to be very drastically impacted by what happens with this, uh, the information that comes out of, uh, you know, the Russia and China alliance in terms of what they're doing with trade, uh, settling in uh, Chinese yuan versus U.S. dollar. What happens with Saudi Arabia? What happens uh, with the OPEC uh, company? Uh, all the nations within the OPEC. Uh, and how they're settling their trade, U.S. dollar or Chinese yuan, because all this stuff, the U.S. dollar has, a, you know, a very, very, very strong correlation with risk in markets. When dollars going up, risk comes down in markets. Meaning, assets like Bitcoin tend to fall. When dollar is falling, the value, you know, basically this dollar index is falling. This also has uh, shown strong correlation with risk assets, risk assets rising. So we need to be paying attention to these things. Now, another thing here is, uh, you know, in all of this FUD, there is a silver lining in some of these things that we're seeing. The U.S. Uh, CFTC, uh, uh, I, I can't, uh, it doesn't matter. U.S. CFTC discards the SEC's security stance, classifies Bitcoin and Ethereum as commodities, as well as Litecoin, I believe. Uh, but we're seeing a battle of, of institutions within uh, even within, for instance, the U.S. of, you know, how these things are classified, which is a good thing in, in a way, because, you know, I would hope that a Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, uh, Cardano, uh, many of these top coins, XRP, uh, as we all know, has been in a long and just never ending case with the SEC about whether or not it's a security or not. But we're seeing this battle between different government bodies about how these things should be regulated. Now, it's good that these things are being discussed, but we need to get a resolution on this. We need to get a resolution and a playbook because the Western world has uh, an immense amount of liquidity that can, uh, can and likely will start pouring into the crypto ecosystem once this clarity is sort of established. And what happens with uh, the what happens with the uh, SEC case with XRP will have a drastic impact uh, on what happens uh, with the rest of the crypto ecosystem. So we need to keep an eye on this. Now, uh, jumping back to everybody here in the community, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button, join us. We've got about 60% of the people that watch on a daily basis that are not subscribed, but I can see you're watching regularly. So what are you doing? Drop down below, hit that subscribe button, Hit the like button, ting the bell. Let us know you, you like to see what's going on. We only have about 77 likes right now and 187 viewers. What are you doing? I'm waking up early to do this for you all. We got our community here of great mods. Uh, we've got a great community in the chat. Hit that like button. Uh, just That's the easiest way you can help support crypto uh, in the space. Uh, just engage with this channel by hitting that like button and the uh, subscribe button. Um, now, Looking, let's go through. Let's see what we should do. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna need to log in here. So, uh, boom, 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 logging in. Okay, just want to make sure you couldn't see my login info. Now, jumping in here, let's look at some charts. What's going on with the market? Where are we at? Okay, let's go over to favorites. Well, we can see the hash ribbon, which is essentially, uh, uh actually, I want to go to hash power, not hash ribbon. Uh, let's go to over here, hash. Boom, back this up. Um, actually, you know what, we'll do difficulty. So this is looknode.com. They've got a ton of free, uh, they have a ton of free on-chain charts that you can utilize. Uh, just, I think all you need to do is create an account. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just like to provide free tools for you all. 
and we can see ah, this is also not what I wanted to show. We'll come over here to favorites. Uh, I don't know where it's at. Uh, must be in one of my other accounts. Uh, but essentially what I'm trying to show here is that here we can, we can actually even show it here with uh, Unchained Macro, macro Miners uh, Difficulty Ribbon. This is not what I want to show. Okay, whatever. So coming over here, we can see that over, look at through, this is the timeline of Bitcoin. And we see this orange line here uh, is basically showing addresses with a balance of greater than 0 0.01. And this is just on a steady climb. Even through this massive downturn right here, we're seeing adoption on the rise. We're seeing new addresses being created. Uh, we're seeing addresses not only being created, but we're seeing addresses that have some balance in them. Even if it's very small, 30, I think 0 0.01 is, uh, let's see what Bitcoin, how much uh, 0 0.01 BTC in, uh, in US dollars. All right, we can see, uh, that's so $270. So this isn't a huge amount of Bitcoin. This is not a huge amount of Bitcoin. This is basically small people that are just starting to get in. We're seeing, look at this, just adoption on the rise. We're seeing balance with 0.1. Uh, this is, you know, basically uh, uh, in the about, about $2,700. St steep incline, people are just adopting into this downturn. We've had a little bit of a plateau here, but what I'm really looking at, what I'm really looking at here is we can see that uh, with the Bitcoin of addresses with over 10,000, this is what's interesting to me because we're looking at very large institutions and we're seeing strong, I mean, huge amount of, uh, I mean, this is a basically, we've had a, a large increase in the number of uh, addresses holding over 10,000 Bitcoin in, you know, basically establishing that they're thinking this is near a market cycle low. Now there's a little bit of a sell off here after the FTX collapse. That's okay, or, or not necessarily sell off, but reduction in the number of, of addresses that uh, that were holding 10,000 Bitcoin. But we're seeing this sort of round out and starting to come to the upside again. Now addresses with over a thousand Bitcoin, we can see this is a, a steady decline here. However, when we come down and zoom in here, we're seeing this sort of a bottom out here. So I'm liking this. What I'm wanting to see here is uh, either a, a, a small increase or at least a, uh, basically a holding flat. I don't want to see I don't want to see large wallets selling off at these levels because that could indicate that there's further downside. Now, when we look at long term holder supply, we can see that each time this has rolled over. This is rolled over as uh, the, basically the Bitcoin price has gone up. Now we're seeing this rolling over here. So this is not going to give us a direct immediate buy or sell signal today, but we're seeing that the, the supply of long-term holders, smarter, smarter investors has essentially stabilized and then also increased uh, towards the bottom of this price action here. So we're seeing a lot of similar things uh, within the on-chain data that is related to market cycle bottoms. Now, a more accurate uh, or a more general sort of chart we can look at is a MVRV Z-score. Let me zoom out on this all the way. And we could see each time the market value as it relates to the realized price value, every time that this is uh, dropped into uh, this accumulation zone, showing that uh, when we're below the zero line here, we, which let me uh, show you just a chart, the zero line, as you can see, this means that the market price, the market value, the price that you're seeing on exchanges, this is showing that the price uh, is, is going below what the realized price is. Well, what is the realized price? The realized price is the basically the average of every Bitcoin in circulation. What, what was the last price that it sold at? So this is a very good, healthy metric to show what the realized value, the average realized value of every Bitcoin in circulation. And we can see each time price has fallen below this level has marked great zones of accumulation. This even dipped right below it in the global shutdown of March of 2020. And we can see this happened right here again, right uh, at the FTX collapse. And what we're seeing with the MVRV Z score, that chart I just showed you before is this standard, the, the standard deviation or the difference between the, the market value, which is the black line here, the price on exchange, how far this is separated from the realized value above or below. And we could see that clearly here as this spikes 
very far away above the realized price. And we're getting this this uh, this uh, basically Z score oscillator, this orange line peaking and showing likely market cycle tops. And we see this even right here. Uh, this is why a lot of people uh, consider that sixty four thousand dollar top is a more likely sort of bull market top as opposed to the sixty nine thousand dollar top. And there's a lot more that goes into that. But what we want to do is we want to figure out where price is going today. Well, we have to look at the macro first. We have to take into consideration that we do have these established areas of accumulation that we were traveling in for quite some time here. And we see this actually pull back and retested this level. So what we can next uh, look at is the RHODL, the R HODL. And this is showing the, rel the sort of ratio between long-term holders and short-term holders in the market. And we could still see that this is dominated because we did get a little bit of a pullback, uh, but we could actually even smooth this out a little bit, get, go to a seven day SMA, uh, it's a simple moving average. Uh, and we can see that the market is still dominated by longer term holders than shorter term holders. This is what this means. When this is very high, this means the market is overweighed with short term holders, AKA weak hands. And so we're seeing in general, we're seeing in general where we're at right now, we're still in a, uh, the market is still fairly dominated by longer term holders. So this is good. The macro is still looking like uh, we're setting up and it, you know, this has not spiked where there's a, the long-term holders have sold and there's a lot of short-term holders. We're seeing that this is still at a very healthy level uh, as it relates to where we're at. You know, we can see even right here, this pushed up, had a little bit of a, a consolidation uh, indecision between long-term and short-term holders here. Uh, and we're kind of in that same sort of zone here. Same thing happened here, pushed up, pulled back into it and then pushed up. And so, all things aligned, we're in a very uh, healthy sort of stage, although markets are feeling a little uncertain. So let's talk about that. Let's also uh, go to, come up here, market valuation. Let's come to cycle valuation. Let's come down to the my on-chain chart, which I'm so happy that they uh, posted on, on this, uh, on this uh, platform. We can see that if we kind of put our mouse over this right here, we can see all the different zones we can see the different price levels and the price action right now is gone up above the capitulation hope zone which if i go like this we could see right here the capitulation hope zone 25,418 so we're above that but we're just below the bull floor band okay this is uh if if we i'm going to press exit if we come here and we turn off all these other uh turn off we're going to turn off all these other Accumulation, take profit zone, extreme height zone. Uh, we can see right here, this purple line, this purple line right here, each time that we break above this purple line, of course, we are already in an uptrend here, but once we actually, we actually found resistance here, had a little consolidation, and then sort of moved up. Similar, this may be something that happens right here. We may have a period of accumulation, which actually would be incredibly bullish for the long term. It will be incredibly frustrating and boring for somebody that's hoping to buy now and have their profits just explode through the roof. But good things come to those who wait. Good things, profits come to those who have planning and patience. So if we do get that break above this level, then we can. Uh, address the charts in a slightly different way, looking for more bullish uh, uh, upside uh, for that sort of midterm period. But as it stands right now, we're getting a little bit of resistance right now, which is also marked with, uh, where are we at? Let's go back to the three day, which is marked with this macro resistance that we're seeing right here. So as you can see, I'm using the ingredients of looking at kind of what's in the news, the news suggests we should get a pullback because we're getting all this FUD. But separate the news out of it entirely, and we can also see, see from the technical data and the on-chain data that just those two things alone also suggested that we were in an, in an area that was likely to have a pause or a pullback as well. So all these things are tying together and giving us a good indication that right now, it's not the end of the world that we're getting, a, 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 I won't even call it a rejection, some resistance at this level, at this uh, 28, uh, 28 to $29,000 level, because this is clearly a part of what the charts were showing us was likely to happen. Now, 
We can also come over here to just standard indicators. Let's go ahead and turn off the moving averages there. Uh, and we can see that even right here with these prices getting higher and higher, we could see that the RSI was showing bearish divergence. We could see that the uh, stochastics uh, were, were flat, not showing higher highs, showing a little bit of hidden bearish divergence there as well. So coming over here to the BitLab trading stack, we can also see, by the way, the MACD. This is on the three-day. We can see the MACD uh, starting to roll. It's not quite rolled over yet, but we can tell that it's starting to roll over because this is bright green on this histogram. But we can also see that this next color is a lighter green. And that, what does this mean? Each time we have a lighter green, going from darker green to lighter green, this is showing that they're starting to be a contraction, meaning that these are starting to come closer together. And so this is this is the standard indicators that you can utilize. Now, using the BitLab trading stack, coming over here, we can see, I'm going to mute this 4MA. Uh, we can see, same thing. We have bearish divergences printed in here, the, the MACD histogram, the RSI, the money flow index, signaling right as we came to this level. Now, similarly, we're having on the BitLab significant movement indicator here, uh, sorry, wrong button, on the significant movement, which is, a, which is basically a combination of multiple momentum indicators like the RSI, like the MACD, uh, and, and uh, multiple others, we can see when there's a comment, when there's a grouping and an agreement between those on aggregate of being overbought or basically overheated, we get this red wave. Now we can see we had a red wave leading into this. So then when we got these uh, three bearish divergences in combination with the macro support previous, which means this is macro resistance, and we can see on our uh, uh, VPVR, we have this low volume uh, gap here that the price action just rocketed through, as Frankie, Can uh, Frankie Candles calls it, just sort of teleported, transported just really quickly through here, because there's not a lot of price action here. Then we understood that once we came into this price level, we could, this was our leading signal, basically. As price came into this level, we knew already we could look to uh, identify when there's other uh, indicators that are suggesting a likely sort of uh, slowdown or uh, minimum slowdown in price action and consolidation or pullback. So had you taken a long from down here or down here and you're doing smaller time frame swing trades or you know a multi-week swing trade, then you know as you're coming into this level, it's very likely that there's going to be, uh, one, other traders that are going to be taking profits, but two, some slowdown in the upward momentum of price action. So what does that mean? Well, this was our leading indicator, meaning the technical, uh, technical analysis that we're doing on this chart, this being macro support, would likely be macro resistance. We also see higher volume in this area. And then we get our bearish divergence as well as our uh, overheated zone on, uh, on the significant movement. Now what you're seeing here, what we're doing is we're not taking an individual indicator and an individual price level, an individual uh, stimulus within the market or uh, signal. We're using a, a sort of combination, a confluence of ingredients to make that delicious dish, meaning what's delicious in trading? Profits. Profits come from finding, uh, one, your edge, having a leading indicator that signals to you something might be coming. It could be a price level. It could be a longer-term divergence. And then looking for other signals that are in agreement with it, but you can not only do that. Try to, try to disprove your theory as well so that you don't catch yourself in a trap of only finding things that support your directional bias. Now, I'm going to pause here for just a moment. I'm going to shout out everybody that's here in chat. How are you doing? We got 193 people watching, 116 likes. Hit that like button, subscribe. Uh, we got this. Uh, we're going to close this poll that we had here. If you hadn't voted yet, vote on that poll really quick. Uh, but it's looking like it's looking like we've got about, uh, let, what does it say? So 65% of the people right now think that the, the, the recent FUD uh, is actually indicating a likely bullishness uh, to what's going on. Uh, now, who's to say why that is or why that isn't? But uh, one of the things I want to point out here, and maybe we have a little bit of a skewed community, but we have a, you know, everybody in this community, there's so much learning that's happening on a daily basis. Uh, if you've been here from the start, from the first week that we've been doing this, 
Uh, throw throw a, throw a first in chat right now. Let me know you've been here. If this is your first week or you've only been watching for within a week, uh, put new. Let us know you're new. We're trying to tie the community together. Let us know where you're watching from. Shout out to my dad in chat. Uh, uh, so she, I see my dad in chat and some other people. So shout out to Brad Guidel as well. Mellow fellow. Uh, so many great people in here. If you've learned anything on this channel, let me know. Let me know what you've learned. And if you have a sticking point, most importantly, I want everybody, let me know. Uh, what is a sticking point you're dealing with right now in your investing or trading uh, or indicators or try to, let me know what your sticking point is because we want to make sure that we're doing content for you. If you're watching this now or if you're watching this later, drop a comment below. Uh, and then the last thing I'm going to ask you to comment on here in the chat, we're trying to get that engagement up in the community. In the, in, so we also are, again, making content for you all. Uh, let me know. What's a project that you think is going to explode in this next bull market? And that, uh, it can be a small coin. It can be a big coin. Do not shill. All you need to do is put it in once. Let me know what you're looking at because we all should be helping each other identify these gems and we can, we can do some TA on these different things. So uh, as for the watch, my dad commented on it. This is a watch my wife got me for my birthday, which was last week. I'm loving it matches my uh you know it's silver but also has some rose gold in the in the face which matches matches my ring so shout out to my wife for that and uh big love to everybody here and, and you know what shout out to tim's ta also over at investing bros i think today is his birthday uh i don't i don't know if he's in chat or not but shout out to him and shout out to everybody that's in that community uh all right let's talk about some charts okay we got bitcoin but bitcoin isn't the only thing in the crypto ecosystem but bitcoin is the sort of big daddy, the head honcho of, you know, really understanding where that risk is in the crypto market. If there's, if there's, uh, especially at the beginning of uh, market cycles, I should say, because people are, there tends to be a, a, a hesitation or a, a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a hesitation. People look to see when the liquidity starts flowing into Bitcoin, the first sign that risk is coming into the crypto markets. And then as that sort of stabilizes and we start to, you're going to see individual altcoins pump for sure. But when we're talking about what's going on with the markets, we wanna look at what's going on with the markets as a whole. Uh, as uh, When we see Bitcoin pumping, we see a little bit of a pullback. What does this mean for what's going on with markets? Well, we need to look at some of the critical uh, sort of factors here. We need to look at the Bitcoin dominance, of course. We see that we've been trading in this range. This is looking at the three-day chart. And I got allergies here, man. Um, we can see we're trading between this range. And when we look at how long this is, we do a measurement tool. This has been for 673 days. We've been trading, basically the Bitcoin dominance, I should say, has been trading in this range. We push up uh, and altcoins may push up alongside it, sure. But as this falls, this is showing that the, there's more liquidity flowing into altcoins. So this is, uh, and we're gonna do a whole video on this, finding the next 100X gem, uh, finding, finding the next, uh, basically setting up your portfolio, not just with Bitcoin, but with the, altcoin, the altcoins and the uh, other protocols that uh, can really explode into the next uh, bull market and how and why to pick them. Uh, we're gonna be doing a video on that very soon but this is something you need to pay attention to this is pushing up now does this mean that the uh that the bitcoin dominance is going to get rejected here uh and just you know send all this liquidity into altcoins it very well could but we have to look at this with a prob probabilistic sort of mindset we need to be realize that this also could push up and if we're having all these banks collapse if we're having this narrative shift about where is a safe haven for where uh, to put our capital and if banks aren't the place. Uh, I don't think banking industry, uh, the banking uh, TradFi is ever gonna entirely collapse. I think it's always going to be a part in some way of our world because, you know, although I am all in on Bitcoin and crypto, um, fiat's never going to fully go away. So there's always going to be a place for, for that. But as this narrative starts to become more, uh, you know, the, the, the beauty that is Bitcoin, the beauty 
uh, and the alternative that Bitcoin and the crypto ecosystem provides to traditional finance and to just, you know, navigating the world. Because it's not just the word value, but it's also, you know, cloud, uh, decentralized cloud uh, storage solutions. It's uh, data aggregators. It's a smart contract. There's so much that goes in the crypto ecosystem. But Bitcoin has such a strong and dominant place within the crypto. We can see this right here. What do these percentage points mean? Well, if Bitcoin right now is at uh, roughly, uh, roughly about 47% of the market, we can also see this here, coin gecko, not coin glass, coin gecko, coin, coin gecko. We can see right now that uh, there's about a $1.17 trillion market cap for all of crypto markets. About 44% as it, as it relates here, and it will be slightly different on coin market cap because there, some are including projects that others aren't, but let's call it about 44, 45% market dominance on Bitcoin. If we look to this chart specifically, this is showing that we're uh, up in the 47% region, but this means of all the entire crypto ecosystem, every project that's out there, all the liquidity that's in crypto, this is showing that Bitcoin the liquidity in Bitcoin accounts for 47% of all the liquidity in crypto. This is a big deal. This is why we want to pay attention to this. Now, as this narrative uh, is growing around the fear of the, you know, the poor management of big, of uh, banks and this cascading banking failures, well, there's a there is a probability here that this this dominance can actually break. Uh, above this 48% and maybe even go all the way up to, you know, this previous, I don't think this will happen, but we have to look at it as a potential. Uh, this could break out and come all the way up here to this 57%, 57.8%. Now, another way we can do this is option F, go to the top, to the bottom, and we can see that, okay, oh, look at this. This 60%, this, this golden pocket here is right at the base of where this price action is. So, now, I wouldn't technically just trade on what the Fibonacci's and, and previous lows are uh, on Bitcoin dominance itself, but looking at what is possible, there's a potential that Bitcoin does break out if there's institutional money and larger retail interest and in going to an alternate safe haven out of banks. Now, because of the awareness of this, also with the federal government and with big banking and Jerome Powell and Gary Gensler and, you know, JP Morgan Chase and all these different uh, institutions, they're aware that Bitcoin is an alternative. Why do you think we come over to, uh, you know, news now and we just see hit piece after hit piece uh, going on with what's going on in the markets in terms of as it relates to crypto? You know, you got Do Kwon, Do Kwon being the, uh, the founder, head person over at Terra Labs, uh, Terra Luna, uh, being arrested, right? Fraud charges. How come the CEOs of Credit Suisse and uh, Silvergate and uh, any of the, you know, any of these banks that uh, basically are seeing the same sort of cascading failures that uh, crypto projects have? Why is it the crypto uh, crypto members and uh, thought leaders and uh, people building in the crypto space? Why are they getting hammered uh, in a different way than the banking uh, sector is? Well, because they want to drive headlines about the illegitimacy of crypto because they see the legitimacy and the alternative that it is, okay? Now, this does show a setup for potential large moves within the altcoin market. So we need to talk about that. We need to look at some other altcoins. So now's the time in the chat, throw in some of the coins you're interested in. We're gonna be breaking down a number of different coins here and seeing what's going on as Bitcoin is showing itself a little bit of resistance at these levels. Let's go ahead and, and continue on Bitcoin for a little bit on a smaller time frame. We're looking at the three day. Let's come down to the four hour and then we're going to go over a couple of the altcoins. Uh, so I just want to uh, again, wanted to say how much I appreciate everybody being here at the BitLab Academy daily live stream. If you haven't yet, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ding that bell. We got 133 likes. We're gonna give some away if we get over if we get up to uh if we get up to 300 likes in this stream i will give something very spicy very juicy away today so drive those likes up so looking at where we're at right now we are pushing up into this zone of resistance 
we've sort of what if we turn off the indicators look at just at price action all of us myself included we forget how good of an indicator price action is we see this rolling over what does that mean when we see momentum rolling over that means that there's uh, uh the contest the tug of war between the bulls and the bears is suggesting that the bulls are losing their steam at this area that doesn't mean it's going to completely break down from here but what it does mean is we can already right up, i would say about right here we could start seeing this rollover factor and then once we start getting this breakout we, we could have forecasted this with the rolling over of these uh these bears now signals are going to be a little bit hinky right now uh they're going to be a little bit because of the uncertainty in the market and with what's going on with fud pieces and the banking collapses we can see that okay we are seeing this blue wave down here on the significant movement and we also saw that you know get immediately bought up this is showing oversold very undervalued we're seeing this again right here but I, I wouldn't trade specifically just on the signal. Just like a, just like with any indicator, you want to build your ingredients together. You want to put together uh, 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 a grouping of different signals that are suggesting a narrative shift one way or another. And the reason why I say that is if we look right here with this oversold, undervalued blue wave on the significant movement, this is immediately following. Uh, let me do that. This is immediately following the uh, BitLab uh, relative extrema. We see this momentum wave, which is this shade here. And when these candles are outside of this momentum wave, this is showing uh, there's not, it's almost like a, uh, a healthy bearish divergence, essentially. I'm talking about like in terms of the health of the move. If there's a price action, this, this, this was not even moving to the upside. This is just very slow sideways consolidation. And look at all of these relative extrema bars showing that there's, this is not even healthily sustaining here. And then what happens? Boom, this breaks down. So we're getting this, this seesaw back and forth of bearishness, uh, bearish signal, I should say, bullish signal. But we're not seeing a lot of concerted effort, concerted signal uh, across the board. So let's go to a smaller time frame. Let's look at the one hour. Now we're starting to see... Uh, I mean, look at this bullish, uh, bullish divergence on the hidden volume, and we get a very small move to the upside, and then collapse. So we're seeing a lot of just a lot of just uncertainty within the charts right here. Going to, uh, the, I mean, look at this. There's seven bullish divergences here, and the price. This is as price was falling, and it basically slingshotted back up. We're holding here, but we're seeing a dominance of bearish divergences. We got one bullish divergence. We're getting a dominance of bearish divergences down here on the uh, hidden volume indicator. And this is a very powerful vol. This is a very powerful overlooked indicator within the BitLab trading stack because when we're having a dominance of uh, one, two, three bearish divergences on volume with only one bullish divergence, this is showing weakness of interest to sustain the price level. And we're getting this sort of kind of balanced out with bullish divergences on uh, the uh, uh, market intelligence. But what we're seeing here is uh, uncertainty between different signals. Now, we got uh, some uh, great updates that are coming to the BitLab trading stack to all these indicators, integrating the relative extrema into the price action uh, candle bars here, as well as some other uh, beginner friendly signals to simplify this for some people. But I, I can't wait to uh, share these with you. These are going to be rolling out very soon. Um, but we're just seeing we're seeing a higher likelihood right now. Uh, just just at looking at the chart, the rolling over nature here, uh, barely, barely holding on to this level right here. Uh, and you know when we're when we're looking at this, let's go to to the daily. Zoom out here. We can see again. We have this volume gap. So I'm I'm looking at this line right here. This this price action resistance, resistance, resistance. Now will this come in as support? And this this level below us would be uh, essentially right. This would be within this volume gap. So there's two things I'm seeing here. There's volume gap, and there is a price action support level here. But I'm thinking that if the likelihood that if we break actually with candle bodies, uh, even on the eight hour uh, below this level, 
I think uh, we likely will get some sort of price interaction here because we have we have this price action top right here. So in this zone right here, basically the 26,200 level, 26,400 in this zone. If we don't get strong buy, purchase, uh, buy, buy orders coming in at this level, um, then I think the likelihood is, is that we are going to come down and test uh, basically option J. Uh, this level right here, the 25,000, I would say 20, 24, nine to 25,200. And that's going to be a big determining factor as to what happens following that. Do we get similar to right here where we had this crash, we had a lower low, strong buying and we rocket it up. So are we going to get something like that where we do go below this level, but come down to this level, which is a similar move to this move, we get a lower low come down to this level and then slingshot up or continue the downside. We need to play things uh, conservatively. We need to play things uh, uh, with uh, careful consideration and with a strategy and a plan. Now, that's what we're seeing right now on Bitcoin. If we are to move, we also, we want to look, we're going to look at two fibs here. Option F, go to the top, bottom to the top. Now we can see, look at this, the golden pocket, Golden Pocket is right in that same zone that I was talking about right here with this previous high, right in this zone right here. So this would, if this does break down and, and, and find support here, this would be very bullish. Now, if we go to a larger FIB from the larger move, this would be from this previous action low. Uh, this would bring us down to also high volume node here, uh, $23,300. Uh, so this would kind of be, if we get to this level here, and we lose this level, this would be kind of a slingshot level to the upside if bulls just come in. If we lose this level, then I am looking at levels uh, more bearishly because now at this point, if we lose this level and we're testing this again, this is showing weakness as we're coming down. So we need to play these things conservatively as it is. Now let's go through a number of other charts. Let's go see what we have sort of pre-lined up and then we'll go through, uh, I can see in... Okay, we got 146 likes, 158 people watching. Uh, like reminder, uh, boom, boom, boom. Okay, seeing this is why. Okay, so we could see. Uh, let's go to Algorand right here. We can see that this is just going to previous all time high, uh, but we want to actually uh, come here. Let's go to the two hour, let's go to the auto. We can see that we're kind of in this channel right here which is two basically macro, two macro trend lines that I had from uh, uh, macro trend line. So resistance, flip to support. This one is still resistance. We're in this sort of zone right here, but we're also rolling over with a sort of inverted cup and handle right here, which is somewhat uh, a little bit worrisome. Option T, kind of draw this, uh, boom. You can kind of come like this right here. This would be very bearish if this were to break below this and lose this level. This would be this would be markets really have Bitcoin markets uh, having a catastrophe. But looking at this on a smaller time frame, uh, we need to just be aware that we have this push up. We had a smaller push up. This this level right here. I'm really watching this uh, uh, sort of 19 cent. Yeah, this sort of 18 to 19 cent range. If we lose this level. Then I'm looking at the the range below us down here at uh, the 16, 16, 5 cent. Now doing our Fibonacci option F coming up to bottom to top. Uh, we can see that, oh, man, we can see that we've already, we've already lost this uh, golden pocket. So we can do another Fib. Uh, I'm going to delete that. We're going to do option F. We can see that on this move right here, we've almost come up to this uh, golden pocket, got rejected. So we're, I mean, everything really is weighing on what's going on with, with Bitcoin right now. Um, so let's look at there's, if there's any other price action levels. Okay. Let's look at our, let's look at our indicators. Turn on our market intelligence. I go to three. Turn off or may. Okay. Now. We can see that this is showing floor support. And this was right about where, let's go ahead and minimize this. This is coming into, you know, ahead of where this support line was. 
but we're seeing the oversold sort of zone here while we're getting uh, the, uh, the histogram this is on macd stochastics and momentum bullish divergences but all we're getting is consolidation here so again this is you know, i'm just looking at this level right here i'm looking down to 18 cents 18 7 uh about what happens at this level and if we lose this level then i'm looking at uh, likely price action to the to, to the downside which would be another 11 uh, percent move down to this zone here currently from where we're at this would be about a six six percent move down if we're able to hold this because i can also see if we minimize this what i can also see is we do have a falling wedge uh, right here, option T. You can kind of, it's a little bit ugly. Yeah, so, so th this is a kind of saving grace here. We're having some bearish structures, but with this, we are getting a bullish structure within this. So if we were to break out of this, option T, we can kind of go from the widest point the widest point here go to this move uh, and this would kind of bring us up to uh 22.6 if we do this entire move let's see if that's in line with any uh that's perfect look at that <laughs> this move here is perfectly in line with where the golden pocket would be on this on this move up so this is the bullish target out of this uh and we're coming into the apex here meaning we're coming into the end of this uh chart formation if we do this doesn't mean it's absolutely going to break bullish I've seen a lot, especially with these uncertain markets, uh, market makers, strong uh, the market makers and uh, basically smart money pushing these smaller market cap uh, uh, you know, assets as compared to traditional assets around and having this breakout to the downside bounce here and then come to the upside is a likelihood. So I don't, wouldn't just say front run this, go all in with leverage. This is not something you should be doing. Let the move break out, uh, potentially come back, confirm itself and then continue to the upside or break down come back up into this zone and then continue to the upside don't try to front run something unless you have a long-term time horizon unless you're looking to just be set up for that bigger play into uh the you know the next year and a half then this isn't necessarily even front running this is just finding the spot in which you want to pick your entry and you have to be okay with that if you have a longer term time horizon find your entry and then if, if prices do fall, then you can find another entry to strengthen your position. Now, again, none of this is financial advice. This is the strategy that I've, that I've learned amongst a lot of other people have learned uh, that has worked best for them. You need to find out what works best for you. And if you are an emotional trader, then maybe you need to wait until you get uh, a lot more clarity about the trend direction on Bitcoin and about more certainty with the, with the monetary policy. If you're an emotional trader, you need to be able, you need to uh, be involved with less risk, uh, volatile assets in the first place. You need to sit on your hands and you need to figure out what your strategy is and practice that before you just go all in on something and you buy in because you think it's a bottom and then it has a little bit of a movement and you get out. That's not what we're all about here. We're about long-term strategies. Uh, and if you are going to trade on shorter-term strategies, then you are you are doing the diligence to understand the assets that you're trading and you understand, have a plan and you stick to your plan and you always practice risk management. Now going to, uh, let's go ahead and look over at uh, uh, it's Cardano. Let's look at Cardano. What's going on with Cardano? Man, just getting back to previous all-time highs, about a 900% move. Now we've got very similar structures on a lot of these altcoins right now. So, oops. So coming back over here, we can see similarly, let's go ahead and go auto. That's the 12 hour, let's come into the four hour. Uh, we can see that this uh, it was sort of an ascending channel. This is a, a ugly, ugly pattern. There's not a lot of clarity. This kind of an ascending uh, channel. These tend to break out to the downside, but I think a lot of things are going to be hinging on what happens with this risk in the markets right now. So we also have a similar pattern that we had on uh, on uh, Algorand before. We could see this uh, sort of falling wedge. We could see uh, sort of see resistance here, rejection, rejection. Now here, flip to support, support. So this is broken out. This is showing that it is broken out. We can do a couple of different trend lines here just to just to just to get some clarity there. And so 
Cardano is breaking out. So what does this mean? Well, let's look at potential stopping, uh, uh, option F, potential stopping points. Uh, this also could be option T, come here to the width there. We can come over here. And this is looking uh, like a stronger potential breakout. I had a, one of my lights just went off. Uh, it's all good. Uh, but Cardano has just been building, building, building for the last several years. And man, when, the, when Cardano starts moving, it moves. Uh, but we have to also look. We have, we have a couple spots ahead. We have our golden pocket right above us at 30, just shy of 37 cents. Uh, the target out of this move would be uh, closer to 38 cents. But then we also have this sort of this uh, uh, projected trend line here of resistance in this channel, which is up here at the 40 cent range. Uh, so we have some we have some spots to look at now. Uh, now let's go ahead. I saw somebody put H bar. Let's look at H bar. Where is H bar? Here we are. H bar. Okay, let's look at what's going. <laughs> Excuse me, going on here. Option T gives you that trend line. Now we can see here that we had two touch points, gave us our trend line. We have another one here, option T. I, I like to do a couple and then clean up my chart. So we broke out of two. I'm going to delete this one, it's less relevant. Now we have option T. We also had a falling wedge, similar similar to Bitcoin and all, all the projects. Now, the it concerning thing here, if we come into the eight hour, concerning thing here, this kind of looks like a kind of very ugly head and shoulders, uh, as you can see here. So if this were to come back down to this region right here, this is a H bar. If this were to come back down to this, basically, which would be the neckline, uh, meaning coming like we have the, meaning coming like this head, shoulder, if this were to come back down to that uh, very ugly head and shoulders drawing I just did, the break down from there, <laughs> look at that, we'd be basically right to this lower trend support of this uh, larger uh, uh, support that we had, uh, multi-year uh, multi support. Um, but that's if that happens. Now on the flip side, on the flip side, we're right at this high volume node. We have similar, just like Algo, a lot of these coins are going to be coiling up the same way. We have a falling wedge uh, here. If we look at this, come down to the four hour. Come here. We've got, okay, let's look at this with some indicators. We found support here. We had one, two, three, four, five. We have five bullish divergences right on the support. We had the blue wave on significant movement that suggested things were very oversold undervalued we had uh, uh the relative extremist sticking out now coming over here to the one hour the problem the worry i have here is that this is already rolling over now rolling over we are seeing a little bit of the relative extremist stick out to the downside showing bullish uh showing that this is likely overheated to the downside but you have to weigh everything against what's happening with price action as well i'm also seeing uh right here we can see head and shoulders we see this shoulder head shoulder so what does that mean we had the bullish attempt got rejected by the bears we had a higher bullish attempt got rejected by the bears now we had a lower bullish attempt again got rejected by the bears so what we're looking at right here isn't a, it's not a major move but looking right here we can see that from the top of that to this the move from this would be basically down to this down to the support so not not a terrible terrible setup there um but we you know even coming man H bar is one of those longer term plays that I'm looking at, uh, but we are still within this. Let's come, let's come back out to the four hour. We're still within this uh, descending wedge, uh, falling wedge, and we've got a long way to go before this uh, sort of apex. Yeah, so I mean, this is this is this uh, Hedera H, uh, H bar still has a lot of work to do. Um, but if the market just gets, you know, for instance, bullish news from uh, XRP case, XRP case getting settled, more clear distinction about what's happening with uh, uh, the regulatory framework on what's a security, what's a commodity, all of these things can send things just absolutely moonshotting. But at the same time, if there's more uh, stringent uh, 
news that comes out on, uh, you know, for instance, suing more crypto exchanges or having more on ramps or off ramps closed for crypto or having tighter regulation in uh, any of the Western world about crypto being outlawed. All the we have to pay attention to all these these things because the reason I bring that up right now, and I'm not trying to be a naysayer on crypto is because crypto and blockchain Bitcoin is such a threat to traditional finance. And in reality, it's not. It's an alternative that these institutions can move into and adopt themselves if they would only realize that. The problem is they're worried about giving up power. But because the, uh, you know, the banking system is on the, feels like teetering on the brink of collapse, they're being very, everything is kind of on a nice edge right now with the certainty in the markets about what, if there's going to be a bank run, if there's, if this other major bank's going to collapse, if there's going to be something that happened at, like in 2008, where we just had a cascading domino effect of uh, institutions falling. People very well may move their, their, their assets into Bitcoin, but at the same time, there's a very high likelihood that if the world is teetering on the brink of uh, some sort of collapse, although Bitcoin is the safest place to put it in the long run, we have to also note that if people are worried about having assets to buy food, they might have to sell their Bitcoin or their crypto. So you need to have your risk management strategies in place right now. So jumping back into the charts, let me see if I, let me see if I got any other uh, from uh, the mods here. Uh, choo -choo -choo. Let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. Now continuing on here, uh, we got some more that we want to do. So the levels I'm looking at for uh, H bar is basically this uh, range uh, that we're in right now. If we lose this level at basically 5.6 cents, uh, then I'm, you know, at least the lows, I, I'm looking at lows right here of this previous previous low region, which is, I mean, it's not that far down, 5.5 cents. If we lose this region, these two zones, then we very well may be coming down to the 4.7 cents uh, region to retest this. If we lose this, if we lose this, then we've established this full head and shoulders and uh, we very well could be pushing, uh, pushing down here. Uh, okay, now we can look at, uh, uh, let's see, where are we at? Let's go to uh, optimism. Optimism. How's everybody feeling today? Are you guys bullish or bearish? What's the last coin you picked up? What's the last coin you sold? Let me know in chat right now. Let me know below the video. Uh, if you're watching this later, and if you haven't yet, everybody, if you have not yet, make sure that you have checked out bitlabacademy.com, which is right there. You can see those are all the correct socials as well. And make sure we've got all the updates. We are integrating me and Alex and Ray and Craig and the Hit Network team. We are integrating this. This is uh, this is this whole website is about to change. Uh, so make sure you come over here, get involved now. Uh, the 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 cost of membership for the courses, which are broken down lesson for lesson. We got trading fundamentals, trading strategy, psychology of trading, on-chain data. Oh, these are all full courses with uh, between, you know, uh, seven to 25 lessons in each one of these courses. We got, uh, I mean, Bitcoin 101, blockchain 101, uh, as well as the Discord that you can, you, you can be a part of. So come and get involved here. Sign up for uh, updates here. You also get entered to win one free month access to the courses and the indicators. We got updates coming to the indicators as well. So make sure you come and check out bitlabacademy.com uh, and uh, get involved in our community. We got, I cannot wait to release all this stuff. Uh, it's been a long, it's been much longer than I expected, but I can't wait to release all this stuff. So let's look at a couple more coins. Let's get this going. Man, I love seeing Cardano finally push into the upside. It just tickles my little heart. Uh, let me know how long have you, what level did, if, uh, are you in, the ADA community, at what point did you get in on uh, ADA or have you been waiting for a level? Let me know. Uh, we've done ALGO. Uh, let's do, uh, we said we were going to do optimism, right? Uh, or I was pulling it up at least. Optimism. Let's go ahead and do optimism USDT. Okay, let's pull this up. Man, look at this. Talk about rounding top. We also got in the, in the courses, BitLab Academy, candles, candle patterns, uh, reversals, how to see, we got so much in there. Go get involved at bitlabacademy.com, I'm telling you. Um, so we're seeing, we got this rolling over. We got, uh, you know, high, higher, high, higher, high. Now, basically, now we're getting our top formation. We also see this rolling over. And then we get our lower highs being established. 
uh, and we also have this lower low. So the question right here is, with all of this, are we going to see that this right here is going to be uh, finally establishing a higher low, which it will be the first step in getting now a higher high? We don't know yet, but optimism, for people that don't know about optimism, optimism just partnered, or Coinbase just partnered with optimism uh, to be their uh, blockchain solution. I think they're releasing a coin called Base, if, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but strong partnership uh, with Coinbase. Uh, and this is all uh, layer two essential uh, optimistic rollups. It makes basically scaling uh, ERC uh, Ethereum sort of uh, chain a lot faster. And it's its own chain itself. Uh, it's an, a really great project early on in its uh, sort of life form, uh, but early on with strong partnerships, which is some of the stuff you want to look at. So looking here at the four hour, we got a high volume node, uh, I mean, sitting, we're sitting right at this level. So we want to really watch option J gives us our, our horizontal ray. If you're on PC, it's alt J. Uh, we got 168 likes, 175 people watching. Man, this is good. We got some good ratios here today. Now we can see right here, this is the level we want to watch. We can see that we have a bit of a trend line right here. And we can also do a secondary trend line on a smaller time frame right here. So what we can see is that price is, the bulls are fighting and they keep getting rejected. Now, if I turn on the 4MA, oh no, I'm not gonna turn that on. Uh, we can see that this, look at this, five bullish divergences. This is on the BitLab trading stack. By the way, anybody that's interested in this, you can come over to bitlabacademy.com, come to indicators right here. And for the full stack, you can get it uh, rather than buying them individually, you can get it for a huge discount. Uh, you can just uh, select right here uh, and you can use, I think, Bit Squad 15 or Relaunch 15 for 15% off uh, your first month. Um, where were we at? We can see that we're, the, the bulls are getting rejected every time they're trying to, and th this momentum is increased to the downside, as we can tell by this sharper angle to the downside. Now we were seeing this strong, sudden bullish divergences coming in here with a blue wave on the bottom showing the momentum indicators, stochastics, MACD, other and a variety of other momentum indicators and strength indicators showing undervalued. Okay, so let's come to a smaller time frame. Let's come to the one hour, see where we're at here. Now, uh, see, we're coming back up into this uh, trend line, this resistance. And what's happening, we're already seeing this red start to flash on the significant movement right here and bearish divergences. So the likelihood is that this is trying to, uh, uh, this is likely going to roll over and come to the downside. So doesn't mean it actually absolutely has to happen, but what does that mean in terms of where the next price target is going to be? Well, we see that this is a low. If, we, if we're trying to establish a higher low, we're trying to make sure that we at least either double bottom here or don't break below this low. Uh, so if we come here, option F, Fibonacci, bottom to top, we can see that this has found support on this golden pocket, but we have fallen below it, and now this is finding resistance on it. How do I know that? This is the golden pocket right here, and we can see that we did bounce at the golden pocket. Now we've fallen through it, and is this going to confirm this sort of rejection and come down? Only time will tell but we're seeing that this is getting overheated at this level. So there's a lot of stuff riding on what's happening with all the certain uncertainty in the market. So the level, the next level below this, uh, delete the next level below this, we can see this, we can form a trend line option T. Uh, let's see. Would be, I mean, yeah, coming, I would say coming down here, we got a lot of different option J gives us another trend line there that was in confluence with where that golden pocket was. It's also previous price action support getting rejected here support. If we are able to break out from here, I would say the next target would be here up here at the $2 and 30 cent level. If we get rejected from here, I would be looking at a target down here at this next, uh, this next level down here. Uh, which is also basically in confluence with where this trend line support is uh, down here at the dollar ninety four level. Uh, if we if we have a strong bearish move to the downside, I'm just checking time there. We are going to have to do the giveaway from everybody that retweeted that uh, tweet from last uh, Friday, and I just want to shout out everybody. If you haven't yet, come over to BitLab Academy. 
the Academy BitLab page. This is from today. Come here and retweet this specific one. Uh, we are going to be doing a drawing uh, for, you know, you have to basically like BitLab Academy uh, as well as a retweet this and you'll be entered to win. Uh, it's either going to be, uh, we've, we've given away lifetime memberships. We've given away indicators. We've given away courses. Uh, it always changes, but we give away something great and you're helping spread the word of the community. You're helping us out here. So coming over here, let's do one more coin. Uh, what shall it be? Uh, hmm, let's see. I'll go BNB. Okay. Let's do BNB. Uh, BNB, BNB USDT. All right. So coming over here, let's look. Got a lot of such similar structures. Look at this head and shoulders and uh, look at this measurement option T to this neckline. What do I mean by neckline? Neckline is all these supports, support, 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 support. This is the neckline of this head and shoulders. This is the actual target of the breakout to the downside. So this suggests that we could be coming lower. This is perfectly in line with this region right here as well. So BNB could be coming lower. However, uh, however, we are on this level of support, but we do tend to see price action do, when it breaks down and do this sort of thing, right? And so we're kind of seeing that right here, stair step down, a little consolidation, stair step down. So I would be looking for a target to the downside uh, if we're having bearish action uh, on Binance, uh, BNB, uh, especially with everything happening in the news right now with all the FUD uh, would be a, a target, which is where this previous price action uh, interaction is right here this high volume node we see we're sitting right on this volume node the target out of this uh, uh head and shoulders also shows right in this region so i would be targeting uh if we basically lose this structure uh let's kind of zoom in here let's go to auto we lose this structure which is option t uh right here option t kind of we got a sort of bear pennant bear flag as you can see, the flagpole, option T, we do our flagpole. We can measure things in a variety of different ways and see how things line up. Now, let's see how that, now look at that. So the, the head and shoulders target was right here. The previous price action target was right here, this yellow line. This flagpole target from this, uh, from this uh, bear flag is right here. So all signs are pointing to if we break out and lose this sort of level right here, would be right here. So what we would do is we come over here, we come to our short position, we set our uh, position just below this breakout level, we put our price action above uh, above the preview, I would do it just kind of within the zone here, and we have our target down here, and we have a 5.53 uh, ratio, meaning we could set our stop loss, uh, we set our entry, the, the strategy would be to set your entry not just immediately here, but if the price action breaks below uh, somewhere in this region here, you don't, you're going to have to pick out uh, where you would want to do that. Let's go ahead and do this like this. Now, price action breaks below this uh, level, and you have, can have to determine where that is. And you set your stop loss uh, either somewhere within this being very tight, especially if you're using any leverage, which I don't recommend in this sort of market right now, or uh, more conservatively above this level here because price action could fake out and then come to the upside. And now you have your stop loss set and then your, your entry, you're basically having a, a, a profit, you know, basically your risk to reward ratio is 3.91. So your risk, your reward uh, on this would be uh, basically roughly 6% uh, gain to the downside, risking a, you know, basically one between, uh, under one, around a 1% loss if your stop loss is hit. And it's okay to have a stop loss hit. That means that you had your risk management in place. The market, the, 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 the price action went in the opposite direction from what you expected. And you, you took a shot and you missed, but you were protected because you used good risk management. Now, we've got to do a giveaway for, and what was it, uh, Alex? You're going to have to let, remind me what it was. I believe it was uh, a three-month membership to the courses. Uh, so uh, we can do that, uh, and we have that right here. Twitter name picker, let me gather the data. Okay, I need to log out. Give me one second. Now I need to pull this copy. And this is from Fridays. All the people from Friday that uh, 
Uh, I'm just logging in here. Give me one second because I have to link this to Twitter. Authorize app. There we go. And yes, you all, I figured out how to do this. So what we're going to do here is do link a tweet. Boom. Uh, winner. Okay, now. Out of the data. Are you ready? This is going to be the winner of three months of courses. If you've already won, we are going to move on to somebody else because we want to spread the love, baby. Uh, and if you haven't yet, hit the like, subscribe, ding the bell. Join us over here at BitLab Academy if you don't uh, do that, which is right here at youtube.com forward slash at BitLab Academy. Join our community. I can't, I'm so happy to have you all here. Now, this is the winner of. Uh, we're going to do start. We gathered. All right. Lumart 3611. Alex Green uh, and I will be reaching out and I will take a, uh, took a screenshot of that. Now, big love to everybody. I really appreciate everybody being here. Again, if this is your first time, thank you so much for being a part of the community. Join our community. Get in the Discord. Uh, go over to bitlabacademy.com, throw in uh, that relaunch 15 or bitsquad 15 or bitlab 15. I think all those coupons are still working. Uh, and uh, get involved because the prices of the courses and uh, the prices of this stuff will be going up once all these updates roll out. And we are in the middle of getting these things integrated. Everybody that joins before that will be able to keep the lower price for the life of their account. So it's the only reason why I'm incentivizing getting in now uh, because it's uh, there's a lot of great stuff coming. So with, all, with that being said, I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Again, my name is Kelly Kellum. Thank you for being part of the community. Go follow me on Twitter uh, and I will see you next time. Adios. Adios muchachos. Thank you for coming. Thank you for tuning in again. Adios, muchachos. Thank you for coming. Like, retweet, hit that stuff so you can be in the giveaway again. See you guys next time.